chosen faith and hope instead of fear and anxiety you can sit in church you have chosen fear and anxiety the fact that they show you a lab report that's not me you should die god will do everything also for you believe him to do so if you don't believe god is going to do it stay out of it your case is different you have another source there is a god you serve if it happened to others it cannot happen to me it is not in your good interest to go to hospital and then you are taking a medicine that you don't know what is going to solve in your system and so part of the things about the release of this Jehu's anointing is that when it comes to your hand you must know what it is going to be used for and number two you must know the right application of it because of that I'm going to take you to what I call the characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel it means that when you see these things manifesting in your life, then you must release Jehu's anointing. And it's going to be a teaching. Hallelujah. So that you will understand the application of it. Amen. If you have stomach ache and your stomach is, is that what you call a running stomach, you don't take paracetamol. Oh? Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. You don't take paracetamol. Um, it is always important to go in the context of the word of God. And let me tell you something. God is not moved by any of our gymnastics and acrobatic displays. He's moved by his word. So once you are standing on the word, you can be sure of victory. If only you don't give up. Hallelujah. What are some of the characteristics of the Jezebel spirit? Amen. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 9, yesterday I read it, verse 7 to 10. I'm going to repeat some scriptures. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master. So after the anointing came upon Jehu, this is what he does. That I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets. My servants, the prophets. And the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. So when you look at this very carefully, you notice that the spirit of Jezebel targets God's servant and God's children. Talk to me. Let me feel your presence. God was prophesying and the prophet that gave the prophetic instruction to the one that um, Elisha sent to go and anoint Jehu. One of the things he said is that the reason why I am anointing you is that thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master, that I may avenge. Everybody say avenge. Give me the king. Let me stay with the New Living Translation, if you don't mind. You are to destroy the family of Ahab, your master. In this way, I will avenge the murder of my prophets and all the lost servants who were killed by Jezebel. So you will notice that we are going to, um, that's what I'm saying, I'm going to talk about the characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel. And I want to take your mind. Jezebel is not a woman. Jezebel is a spirit. Amen. Amen. Can we continue with that? Amen. You will notice that God said, I'm going to anoint you to do that because the spirit that we are going to deal with has dealt with other people before you were born. God is talking about prophets and servants of the Lord who were killed by Jezebel. They have already been killed. But the generation is rising up that God said, I'm raising a lot of Jehus in this generation. Aren't you glad that you are privileged to be part of the Jehus? Amen. So that is literally what is actually going to happen. The next verse says that. Hallelujah. I'm reading up to verse 10. Uh, the entire family of Ahab must be wiped out. I will destroy every one of his male descendants, slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I would destroy the family of Ahab as I destroyed the family of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, and of Basha, son of Ahijah. Mm -hmm. Dogs who eat Ahab's wife's Jezebel at the plot of land in Jezreel, and no one will bury her. Then the young prophet opened the door and ran. So the prophet that Elisha sent to go to the house of, to go among the armies and anoint Jehu. The prophet went there 
And he was supposed to speak this prophetic word after that, run for his life. So he finished declaring this thing. And remember, he was releasing this prophetic word with him and Jehu alone. With him and Jehu alone. When he finished, he ran for his life. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's a form of a warfare. Huh? It's not something that you joke with. not something that you play games with. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. So the first characteristic is that the spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of murder. Jezebel is a murderer. She Naboth murdered because she and because she and the wicked Ahab wanted his vineyard. It's a story. When you go to 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 12. 1 Kings chapter 21 and verse number 12. You will notice that the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of murder. So when you receive this Jehu's anointing, every murdering spirit will be destroyed from your background. This is all you must understand. I'm giving you the characteristics so that when you get the anointing, you know exactly what is going to happen there. So some of you come from families that they cut people life premature. Some of you come from families that people get strange sickness that trouble them. Hallelujah. And the sickness so bring worry and anxiety that the devil used that to kill. It will end by the anointing of Jehu in your life. Because the reason why we are engaging this thing is that the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of Metra. Watch this. They call for a fast huh? and put Naboth at the prominent place before the people. Now, this is where when you come back a little bit to verse number 6. Let's come back a little bit. I asked Naboth to say, let's go to verse number, let me read from verse number one for clarification. Watch this. Now, there was a man named Naboth from Jezreel who owned a vineyard in Jezreel beside the place of, beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. So, the way Porter City is, uh, has neighbors, Naboth has a certain vineyard and the vineyard was sort of shared boundary with Ahab's palace. Go to the next verse. Let me show you. Don't forget that the spirit of Ahab, the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab is the spirit of what? Medra. That's the first characteristic. One day, Ahab said to Naboth, since your vineyard is so convenient to my palace, I would like to buy it to use as a vegetable garden. I will give you a better vineyard in exchange. Or if you prefer, I will pay you for it. Now, it's not that Naboth doesn't want money or he doesn't want to give to the king. Listen to Naboth's answer. Naboth said, but Naboth replied, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance that was passed down by my ancestors. The reason he cannot say the thing is that it is a kind of property for the family that is passed on. So it's more or less like a chieftaincy throne. So it is not supposed to be sold because if they sell it, Naboth would have gotten it. At least five people are with me and they will help me to preach. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Now watch this. So the reason why Naboth will not give it to the king is that it is not for me. It is my father's inheritance. It was passed to me and it will be a curse on me for me to sell it. I prefer never to walk in a curse just to please you. So Naboth said, God forbid, I can't do this. Hey, if, if, it were, if one of the ancestors sold it, then it will not even be in my turn. There is somebody also behind me that is waiting for him to enjoy. So I can't say, now watch this. That's what happened. So Abu went home angry. And surely because of Naboth's answer, the king went to bed with his face to the wall and refused to eat. If you look at him, he's the president of the country. There was much, nothing more he could do. It was an evident that this thing is an inheritance and I can't say it. She couldn't do anything, he went there. But remember, the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of Medra. So what Ahab couldn't do, Jezebel did it with ease. Now, let's continue reading. Watch this. What is the matter? His wife Jezebel asked him, What's, what made you so upset that you were not eating? Watch this. I asked Naboth to sell me his vineyard or trade it, but he refused. Ahab told her. Are you the king of Israel or not? 
Jezebel demanded, get up and eat something. And don't worry about it. I will get you Naboth's vineyard. Straight. So the next thing you must understand about all you are holding is that when you are dealing with the spirit of Jezebel, hmm, it kills you in your rightful place. I'll go further and explain. This oil and this grace will secure your life for the next, for the way you are going. Watch this. So he didn't tell us the matter, but he told his wife, husband, I'm going to get you the vanya. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed, and sealed them with a seal. So she went to the office. She is not the president of the country. She wrote letters in the name of the president. So what Ahab couldn't do, his wife did it because he carried the spirit. Now very soon, I'm going to show you where Jezebel comes from. I'm going to show you the father of Jezebel and I'm going to show you his descendants. Amen. Amen. So he wrote a letter in the name of the king and sealed it and sent it to everywhere. Huh? And sealed them with a seal and sent them to the elders and, and other leaders of the town where Naboth lived. So let's say Naboth lived in a place like Ningo. She went to the, 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 the regional minister and everything and wrote a letter and he managed to forge Ahab's signature. She managed to see the letter. What were they supposed to do? In her letters, she commanded, call the citizens together for a fasting. So you see, when you see Jezebel calling for a fasting, it's for destruction. Not every fasting people does. That is to promote God. So if you don't fast, a satanic fast can destroy you. It's a good place for you to clap for Jesus. Almost every religion fast. Almost. Almost every religion fast. In her letters, she commanded, call the citizens together for a fast, fasting and pray. And give Naboth, Naboth a place of honor. Eh? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And then, and then sit two squandrels across from him who accuse him of cursing God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. So he gave the plan the way Naboth should die. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of Metra. Not everybody in the cemetery die because it's their time. And you can be a careless Christian. It can cause you. You either die or you are killed. So the anointing you are holding, huh, you must release your faith enough that whatever is looking for you to kill, this or you will take care of them. I pray that I will get a better amen from what is happening. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of Metra. Amen. When it comes upon people, they kill all over the place. Now watch this. So the elders and the other town leaders followed the instructions of Jezebel. Instructions Jezebel has written in the letters. And don't forget, all this why they think the instruction is from Ahab. Mm -hmm. But it's from the spirit of his wife. Watch this. They call for a fast and put Naboth at a prominent place before the people. And what happened? Then the two squandrels came and sat down across. Now, when you read the King James, they are called the sons of Beliah. So come to the King James. Let me show you something. And there came in the two men, children of what? Beliah. It, that, now, now, when the Bible used the word Beliah, they are almost like demons. They are like agents of the devil. Wicked people. Sons of, I don't want to come. But the sons of Beliah, these, these people call them some squandrels who are just around. Come back to the New Living Translation. Then the two, the, 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 the two squandrels came and sat down across from him. And no, now, you have to understand that all this thing that is happening, Naboth is not aware of it, but it's a plot. 
So it's not every honor that you enter. Some things are too good to be true. Suddenly met somebody in church. Suddenly the person begins to bless you. Suddenly he does not do anything, but he buys you a car. Suddenly you start enjoying things and lifting up your shoulder. Hey! Is that the way you got blessed overnight? Jezebel said that, put him in the place of honor. Uh-huh. If, if Naboth had discernment, you could have escaped. I don't want this, and I don't want to be part of it. I'm teaching. Then the two scandals came, and they accused Naboth before all the people, saying, he cursed God and the king. So he was dragged outside the town and stoned to death. Look at what happened. The town leaders then sent word to Jezebel. Naboth has been stoned to death. All this are a plot. So you, without the anointing of Jehu as an aggressing anointing, you can be walking about and there's a satanic plot. I lift up my hands as God's or servant. And with the revelation God gave me to preach that every satanic plot against you and your family shall backfire and boomerang in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of Medra. Be seated. Um, uh, the town leaders then sent a message. So the plot has been succeeded. Naboth has been killed because of, and watch this. So when you see any time a parent, an old man, or somebody died in a family, and they are fighting on the properties, and they forgot that they are brothers, and they want to kill one another, the spirit of Jezebel is in operation. Yeah. That is why sometimes I tell people, stay away from it. Even I couldn't give them the details of the message, but there are several people I tell them, don't fight this property, stay away from it. God gave me this revelation many years ago. When my grandmother was about to die, she wanted to give me some hectares of land. The Lord told me, don't take it. Many years. My mother couldn't understand that. I said, I don't need it. No. Believe God for your own blessing. Yes. Believe God. It is possible for God to bless you. Don't go and fight for any properties among people with the spirit of Jezebel. If you are not strong in the Lord, they will murder you up. Watch this. They did that. When Jezebel heard the news, she said to Ahab, you know, you know, the vineyard, Naboth wouldn't sell you. Where? You can have it now. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. The spirit of Jezebel, it's the spirit of what? Medra. As if that is not enough. Jezebel slew all the prophets. It was in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 13. I read it to you. He slew. So the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of Medra. 1 Kings chapter, chapter 18 and verse number 13. Huh? 1 Kings chapter 18. Has no one told you, my Lord? This was said by Obadiah. When Obadiah met Elijah, and Elijah told him that go and tell your boss. Go and tell your boss. He said, go and tell Ahab. Go and tell Ahab that you have seen me. He said, ah, do you want to kill me? So Obadiah was telling us something that nobody, none of us know. Because Obadiah was one of, the, one, of, one, of the, one of the leaders, or let me say one of the guys that was serving around Ahab. So he saw something. Now listen to Obadiah. Obadiah said that. Has, has no one told you, my Lord, about the time when Jezebel was trying to kill the lost prophets, I hid hundreds of them in two caves and supplied them with food and water. So when the spirit of Jezebel is in a town or a country, it wants to eliminate all prophets. This is the bottom line. Hallelujah. It wants to kill not just the prophet, but the people that are serving God. Because as far as the spirit of Jezebel is concerned, nobody must serve the living God. 
So it's a spirit of murder. It killed Naboth. And he, Obadiah was saying that they killed all the prophets until this guy was serving around Ahab. But he hit 100 prophets in two cases, 50 by 50. And he was spending his money to feed them. Obadiah hide the prophet because the spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of murderer. That means that if God raised prophet for you and you don't take good care of them, they stand the chance of going to the wrong place for sustenance. I have seen young prophets trapped by sugar mummies because those mummies are the spirit of Jezebel. They quench the anointing. I'm teaching. Mm-hmm. I've seen young men who was promising ministry, young ladies, they have called of God, but they got trapped by men with Jezebel spirit. Yeah, they sleep with them until they lose confidence in their calling. Because no matter the calling on your life, one of the ways for your calling to work is that you must have confidence and you must have courage. And sin breaks confidence and courage. Because listen, it is difficult to preach holiness when you are not living a holy life. Very difficult. Come do it. Amen. So the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of murder. It kills. So the anointing you have received is not a joking matter. Hallelujah. You got to wake up. Amen. And when you pull it in your house, everything there will start fighting. Tomorrow I'm going to show you the, the thing. When the people went out in battle and David wanted them to bring Absalom back, the Bible said when the sword stopped fighting, the trees begin to fight. So you see, Absalom rose up against his father. David forgive him. But the throne David was sitting on did not forgive him. So sometimes eh, there are people you don't touch even if they are your father. Because they might forgive you. Now, David told Joab, he said, take the young man and bring him to me. Joab didn't kill David, Absalom. When they put the sword down because they know the sword will kill, the trees begin to fight. And it is the trees that hang Absalom. Yeah. How can a person be hung by the weight of his hair? So the trees actually took him by the supernatural and tie him into the tree and hang him. And when you go to the book of Psalms, the Bible says, when the sword stops fighting, the trees begin to fight. It is the trees that kill him. Yeah. So David forgave him, but the throne did not. These are all the things that make you live a careful life and you don't live a careless life in your Christianity. It is useless for you. As a child of God, you can't fight. There are some people, when you engage them in a battle, it's a lion and a rabbit battle. In the spirit realm, that's what it is. Some people rose against Moses and said, are you the only one God has called, blah, 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 blah. And when God came in his anger, Moses forgive them. Now listen, look at even Miriam and Aaron. Moses forgive Miriam, but God did not. So there are people, when you are dealing with them, it's beyond them. You are dealing with another higher power. And so if you are smart, you are careful. You stay away from them. Now listen, do you know something? I told you before, I said that. Even though the Bible specifically said that the spirit of the Lord has departed from Saul, but David never killed him. Do you know the reason why? Eh? The reason some of us who misbehave and are run anointed is because you are not anointed. Now, the Bible didn't spell it, but one day I picked that by revelation. That the prophet that anoints Saul is a prophet that anoints David. I don't know the experience David had when the oil came on his head. All the Bible said is that the spirit of the Lord descended. When the same oil came upon Saul, they were said about Saul. He saw also among the prophets. Now, David might have concluded that if what I fear is what Saul fell, then nobody must touch it. So even though the spirit of the Lord descended, uh, departed from Saul, an evil spirit descended upon him, she was one of the people that was playing guitar for him to be free. But even when the opportunity came for him to kill me, he said, who can touch God's anointed and go free? That means David looked beyond Saul. 
So there are people there, eh, you can see all their weakness, but look beyond them. It's very important that you understand this principle. That it's not everybody you touch, it's not everybody you repair, it's not everybody you stand against. You may not see the result, but if mercy doesn't take place, God can demand some things. Yeah. Because there are people who are making mistakes now you are seeing, but they've paid price before. Am I teaching? And so you become very careful. Anybody that has ever experienced anointing will be careful the way you touch the anointing. Anybody. No, I, 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 I will never touch any anointing. No, I will never engage, no matter whether they are small or big. No, no, no. Just said, if they are higher than me, I won't try it. Hallelujah. Because I know, I understand the thing. I've seen it in the Bible. I've read the principle, and that's what it is. Hallelujah. Even in their mistake, I won't touch them. No. No matter what they have done, I won't touch them. I've seen people fall and bounce back stronger than when they fell. It's called the dealings of God. It's called the dealings of God. God has a way of dealing with everybody. There are things others can survive. You will not survive it. And it's left with God to make a decision. So if you are wise, you stay out of it. Hallelujah. Listen, don't fight people who have done things that you have never done. Don't stand against people no matter how they've fallen. No. Do you know something? When David sinned, do you know how this same saw that anointing departed from him? When David sinned with Bathsheba, God came to David and said, I deliver you from the hands of your master. Mm. So while Saul, mm. David was playing the guitar, having acknowledged that Saul was his master. Mm. Now, if you think that now you are the latest man of God, you are going to kill him, him. In heaven, you are his master. The man is your master. It's in a modern way, say, your mentor. He trains you how to use fork and knife in the palace. This is the wisdom. It's not enough to carry the anointing. You must walk in the wisdom of the oil. Don't carry the spirit of Jehu and go and misbehave. It's not in your interest. Amen. Because the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of murder. Am I teaching somebody here today? Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Huh? Huh? It, number two is the spirit of wickedness. It's the spirit of murder. It's the spirit of wickedness. Jezebel is wicked and stirs up strife, evil, violent, and chaos. This is the work of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of Medra. It's also the spirit of what? Wickedness. Is it wickedness or wicked? Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 21 verse 25. Hmm. First Kings chapter 21. Look at it. Let me read the King James first and I'll read the New Living Translation. But there was none like unto Ahab which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So, in the history of creation up to Ahab, the Bible said there was no wicked person like that. How can you have such a title? Look at the New Living Translation. Are, are you sure I should continue teaching? No. Because if you don't understand the anointing you have Kali, you are going to use it as a permit. Some of you will be going out Hey Lord, as I'm going at favor. No, this is not for that. This is for your freedom so that you can fulfill the purpose of God for your life. This anointing is making sure that nobody can touch your life before your time. Anybody that dares you will die in your place after this anointing. No, no one has so completely showed himself to what was evil in the Lord's sight as Ahab did under the influence of his wife Jezebel. Under the influence of his wife. No one showed themselves to do that. So the spirit of Jezebel is a wicked spirit and God spelled it out. In the history of all kings, there was no wicked one like Jezebel. 
So when the spirit of Jezebel is around your life, eh, it demonstrates wickedness. Wickedness. They don't care. Demonstrate a lot of wickedness. Hallelujah. And I don't have time enough to talk about what is wickedness. Amen. Wickedness. Wicked. Spirit of Jezebel. Many years ago, I picked a lady by revelation. I think it's made in power. I was watching one of those things and I saw it. And when I picked it, I said, I see a ripe banana. Some of you remember. And when one drop, one person dies. And at the time, I picked the lady, which was sustained, about five people have died. So one wicked person has done enchantment and divination and tie people's name on banana. When it drops, you die. And I release a counter. No, how many of you were there? Yes, there were people there. Hallelujah. And that is what saved his life. After this Jehu's anointing, any witchcraft squadron that they mention your name, may the soul that the Lord pursue them instant. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of wickedness. I'm taking you through the characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel. Are you with me? Number three is the spirit of slander and false accusation. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of slander. Huh? S-A-S-L-A-N-D-E-R is the spirit of slander and false accusation. That's the spirit of Jezebel. It's the spirit of slander and false accusation. Jezebel is a slander, false accuser, and false witness who is out to destroy all who oppose her. So, you see, when you are dealing with a boss with the spirit of Jezebel, even when you oppose her small, you face the consequence. Does he want to be corrected? Does he want to be advised? No. Hallelujah. It's a spirit of slander. It's a spirit of false accusation. Are you with me or you've gone home? Can I continue teaching now? First Kings chapter 21 verse 12 to 13. It's a spirit of slander, false accusation. First Kings chapter 21. They, then, let me read the King James. They proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Beliah, and sat before him. And the men of Beliah witnessed against him the spirit of slander and the spirit of false accusation. So the, they, they killed Naboth by false accusation and slander. Witness against him, even against Naboth. In the presence of the people say, Nabot did blaspheme God and the king. He never did any blaspheming. But when you are dealing with the spirit of slander, they will so address that will fit you. May Jehu's anointing begin to rise up on your life in a very strong way. Is somebody understanding what I'm talking about? So they force accuse Nabot and they kill him. So when you are going, when you are working in the office, there is a lot of false accusation that you are dealing with Jezebel. Immediately, your Jehovah's anointing must be released. So, I'm teaching you the characteristics. And tomorrow, I'm going to teach you the application. It's not enough to just to carry it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It is useless to have a gun in your home, but I don't know how to shoot it. Oh, Jesus, I'm teaching. Amen. In the presence of the people saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carry him forth out of the city and stone him with stones that he died. She did what? Died. So the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of slander and the spirit of false accusation. Anyway, you see people accusing you falsely, Jezebel is behind it. The hand that is clapping will be delivered from this thing. I'm teaching, I'm teaching you the characteristics. Today, I did extensive studies in the scriptures. I've stayed all throughout my study room. 
going through the Holy Ghost teaching me different things. Hallelujah. Huh? Hmm? The spirit, number what? Number what? Is it four? Okay, the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of threat, intimidation, bullying, and terrorism. Can I say it again? The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of what? Threat, intimidation, bullying, and terrorism. This is the demonstration. Jezebel uses threat. She uses intimidation. She will bully you out. Look at what he did to Naboth. What his husband could do, he did it with ease. Huh? And it's a terrorism spirit. Just like the terrorists of our day. They kill the dead to put fear in the living. This is it. So some of you are afraid because of something that happened to a family member. That's a Jezebel in operation. And sometimes they give you the same things and tell you it's going to happen. No. A spirit of Jezebel can let you be afraid because your first three senior sisters has gone to marriage and come home. And Jezebel is telling you you'll be the next. So when you are dealing with the spirit of Jezebel, it's a spirit of threat. It's a spirit of intimidation. It's a spirit of bullying. And it's a spirit of terrorism. They will terrorize you. Sometimes terrorism is one which in the family everybody is afraid. One wizard that threatens everybody. Do you know who I am? Oh, just Jehu will tell you who you are. Jehu's anointing is going to define who you are. Don't take this anointing for granted. Hallelujah. I said, don't take it light at all. Characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel. It's the spirit of threat. So they threaten you. Mm -hmm. When you see anybody in the office that threaten you, eh? you come here to take my glory, you see what will happen to you. That is Jezebel in operation. The moment you see the threat, lift up your Jehu's oil. Yeah. And let the oil fight. Let the oil fight. Let the oil fight. Let the oil fight. The spirit of bullying, they will bully you through. The spirit of intimidation, they will intimidate you. Jezebel can be a husband. Jezebel can be a wife. Jezebel can be a mother-in-law. It can be a sister-in-law. When you see them issuing threat, Jezebel is behind it. It can be anything. Jezebel can be a sickness that is threatening your life. That is why you must learn the application of the anointing of Jehu. What is the spirit of Jezebel? It's the spirit of what? Threat. He sent messengers to threaten Elijah, the prophet. Oh, you have forgotten. First Kings chapter 19, verse 1 and 2. He sent messengers. And I have told Jezebel all that Elijah has done and with that, how he has slain all the prophets with the sword. Give me New Living Translation. Watch this. When I have got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah has done, including the way he has killed all the prophets of Baal. Watch this. It's a spirit of threat. Don't forget it. Verse 2 said, so Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. <laughs> Any message they try to send to you after today, Jehu respond to them immediately. I said that Jehu's anointing will respond to them immediately. Amen. May the God strike me and even kill me. If by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Threat. Threat. He gave the prophet 24 hours and instead of going to his God, he ran. So when the spirit of Jezebel is on you, it threatens you. And when it threatens you and you are weak in the inside, you will forget your God. It doesn't matter who is threatening you, your God is not dead. Threat! A lot of things are threatening us. Coronavirus is a threat. And I perceive Jezebel is behind it. It's a threat. Many are threatening. We are not trusting one another. We can't trust all kinds of things. This spirit has stopped us from visiting one another. It can't. It has put us in a state of loneliness, obscurity. You have to live alone. 
God created us to interdependent on one another. Visiting. But now, wickedness is ruling all over. Some people have to make money out of it. Let the Jehu sword be lifted. Yeah. Yeah. The message we are preaching here. Anything threatening you, if you believe this anointing, this anointing will respond in a very strong way. It's a threat. Threatening the mighty prophet and he ran away. The reason Elijah ran away is that it's not just empty threats back with witchcraft. Threat, intimidation, bullying, and then terrorism. Hallelujah. Is it number five? Is it number five? The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of manipulation and control. It's the spirit of manipulation and control. Somebody say manipulation and control. It can come upon a wife. You manipulate the husband. It can come upon a husband. You manipulate the wife. It can come upon a boss. You manipulate all the work. It can come upon a pastor. You manipulate the church. If you go to another church, I will kill you. If you are part of my church, you don't go anywhere. Manipulation and control. It's called Queen Mother Spirit. Control. So women use their woman who to control men. Yeah. See that control. Amen. Mm -hmm. I won't go into details about it. If you see that thing happen, Jezebel has taken over. Now let me tell you something. Jezebel can use you on a waist. Can be sitting in church speaking in tongues, but the spirit of Jezebel is using you. Now, to get the revelation, you continue to use it. That is why I say, in the camp, I'm going to take people to practical deliverance. Amen. Control. Amen. Control. Hallelujah. Jezebel is a controlling and a manipulative spirit. What Ahab could do to Jezebel did it. First Kings chapter 21, verse 4. Hmm? He wanted Naboth Venya. So Ahab went home angry. And, 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 and let me read the King James Version. Because huh? I read this one. And Ahab came home. Ahab came into his house heavy and, and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite the has spoken to him. For he has said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would not eat no bread because he won the vineyard of Naboth. Watch this. Control. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he told her, he said, And he said to her, Because I spoke unto Naboth, the Jezreelite, to, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. Why don't you go and take that one? And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. You see, he didn't even tell the truth. The guy didn't say he won't give you a vineyard. He said that. I will not give my father's inheritance. The reason I'm not giving it to you is that if it's mine, I will give it to you. But it doesn't belong to you because if the other people sold it, it wouldn't have been my turn. By the spirit of manipulation and control. Look at the next verse. What it is? And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thy heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezebel. Manipulation and control. Amen. Manipulation and what? Control. I see you come out of all these demonic attacks. I see, I see you come out of all these demonic attacks. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 21 verse 7. I've read that one. And Jezebel said to his wife, Does thou now govern Israel? So he's trying to tell him that, Are you not the president of Israel? 
Uh, and if you are the president, who dare to? The fact that you are president as well, you can walk to everybody's house and take his out. So watch this. If your mind has not been, Paul said that be not conformed to this word. Be it transformed. If your mind has not been transformed, don't envy what people has. When they give it to you, you will destroy it. Because it's not the thing you are envying, it's the state of the mind. It is very simple. Be the president of a country that's no me, you can just go and possess anybody's property. But when the spirit of Jezebel is there, it takes that which does not belong to him. So if you don't release the Jehu's anointing, they will take from you that which is your bona fide property. Amen. Any younger chasing somebody's husband has Jezebel's spirit. He's under influence of Jezebel. Yeah. Yeah. Because you are manipulating somebody and taking their bona fide property. You are sharing somebody's inheritance. Amen. Amen. I am talking to Christians. I don't care what unbelievers do. I'm talking to the children of God. What right should I have to judge an unbeliever? But I have a right to preach the gospel to you. The fact that you know the man has a wife and you are still going at him, you are manipulating the man. You are controlling him. Manipulation. Control. Manipulation. Control. Any young girl that's using his ways to get an appointment letter. It's under certain influence. You have the job all right. But you didn't get it by favor. You got it by organ. How do you want me to say it? Look at your neighbor and say, don't pretend you are holy. Don't. They are there. They are all there. They are on the church. Amen. Oh, can I go deeper? There can be a spirit of Jezebel in a church that control the pastor. There are guests in church who sleep with their pastor. They have affair with their pastor. Control the pastor. One young pastor told me outside the country, said that, this guy I'm going out has stopped me from preaching holiness. The girl warned his pastor, don't talk about holiness again. They are manipulating control. Amen. You are not afraid. I don't know how to quote that scripture in the English, but I'll quote it in three. Sinti duani di abeba. Nani enamane sonu. So, the man of God has fallen, but one day you answer to God. Listen, 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 listen. If your temptation is connecting you with an anointed, run. Leave all your underwears and run. Naked. And if you don't know how to run, flee. No. Because there are certain people, if you cause them to fall, heaven might not forgive you. We are dressed and why said that what time we pass the fee? So we come born here you do ane. Chat a day so. Huh? Is your pastor a tree? Is he not a human being? Huh? Chat a day we do go Juma as a secretary. What do you want your boss to do? Paul say not all men has faith. I'm very sorry. I have left the stage of coming here to preach about dressing. We have mature. But if you have the Holy Ghost in you, and the Spirit of God is in you, and you have a mirror at home, and you dress 
with the combination of Holy Ghost and your mirror, you should be able to tell and say, Tade we dear. I mean, say, son, you have the audacity to have the Holy Ghost, have that mirror, and unfortunately for your mirror, you have one front, one back. So you can look at the front one to see what is happening at the back. And you still walk to church. We are not doing advert here. We are serving God. And if it is Porter City you are targeting, you'll be disappointed. Because these men here, they are loaded with purity. Go somewhere else. Today, I pick one message. Sometimes God just give me a title and I started preparing the message. And he said, be careful what you do in front of your children. That is what they will grow and copy. So when you beat their mother in front of them, I'm developing the message. Be careful what you do. Continue drinking whiskey in front of them. You and your husband should continue exchanging words. Sometimes it's amazing some Christian can pronounce some words. It's amazing. When the Holy Ghost is in you, some words, it should be difficult to pronounce. I just have the title. I'm here to pay the message. Be careful what you do in front and in the presence of your children. It's a blessing for your children to grow up knowing that you love their mother. It's a blessing for your children to know that you love their father. It's a blessing. They will end up picking what you are. We have sown wrong seeds. And we are reaping the harvest. And we need grace to correct it. Grace and mercy to correct it. Stop repeating the past mistakes. Stop it some way. Stop repeating them. Amen. May the Lord deliver you from manipulation and control. What is the last point? The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of what? The next one is the spirit of <laughs> wickedness, corruption, immorality, and robbery. They robbed Naboth today, I mean, brought daylight and took his very out. Look at 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 14 to 15. After they force accuse him, they kill him. It's the spirit of what? What did you write? It's the spirit of what? Wickedness, robbery, huh? Corruption, uh huh. You have to be corrupt to declare a fast and tell them that they should force accuse somebody. Look at the way he went about it. Before he killed Nabat, they said they should declare a fast in the town. When they declare a fast, all of them were fasting and said that Nabat has blasphemed against God and the king. Nobody heard the blaspheme, but the spirit of robbery. Wickedness. Watch this. Huh? Then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Robbery. And then he took the vineyard and gave it to his husband. Daylight robbery. They will rob you of your marriage, rob you of your children, rob you of your child. This Jehu's anointing would descend and fight. The spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of witchcraft and prostitution. Hold on. It's the spirit of witchcraft. Jezebel was a daughter. <laughs> that I'm going to show you his background. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was a daughter of a pagan king who worshipped Baal. Do you know he introduced Baal worship in Jerusalem? Very soon now. Today I picked something that was very interesting. <laughs> 
I'm going to take you to that point. That do you remember that Jehu killed the prophets of Baal? Oh, I've never introduced that one to you. Oh, okay. Elijah killed the prophets of Baal. But Jehu also killed the prophets of Baal. I'm going to show you that in a second. That means that after the prophets of Baal were killed by Elijah, Je Jezebel raised another one. I'll take you there. But let's go to the background of Jezebel. That's why I say, be careful what you do with your children. His father was a king. Do you remember when Jehu killed Jezebel? He sent a message and said, he is the daughter of a king. Then I begin to make research. So go and take his body and bury him. Let's give him the respect that the fact that he is a princess. He's a daughter of a king. There was a northern kingdom and his father was an idol worshiper. First Kings chapter 16, verse 31 to 33. First Kings 16. Huh? Jezebel was the daughter of a king who worshipped Baal. She was involved in witchcraft, sorcery, ah, divination, and sexual immorality. Watch this. And it came to pass as if it has been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat. And he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Etba, king of Zidonians, Zidonians, and went and served Ba and worshipped him. So Jezebel's father is called Etba. He was the king of what? This is Donian said. If you go back to those um, astra, uh, the occultic people, this thing is mentioned there. And went and served Ba and worshipped him. Next verse. Watch this. And he re-read up the altar of Ba in the house of Ba, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a groove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Because of the woman he married. Etba is the father of Jezebel. She is the one that really introduced power worship. And Jezebel took it and brought it to Jerusalem. So, when no matter how Christian you are, if you marry the daughter of Etba, you will lose your God. So, let's be careful with these daughters. Who drag unbelievers and bring them to church and say, marry us. This is it. So listen. Most of Ahab wickedness, she got the training from his wife. Bottom line. Come back to verse 31 and give me the New Living Translation. Watch this. <laughs> And as though it were not enough to follow the example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel. So it was not enough for him to follow the examples of Jeroboam. Jeroboam is one of the most wicked kings who has ever lived. And the Bible says, Ahab became more wicked than Jeroboam. So when the wicked calls you wicked, Jeroboam, he married Jezebel, the daughter of King what? Edba of the Sidonians and he began to bow down in worship of Baal. Look at the next verse. First, I have built a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. The headquarters of Christianity he built a temple. So when you drag an unbeliever and bring him to church, you will build a temple in your home. What a sad story. No. Some of the ladies are walking around in church looking for prayer, but they've forgotten the foundation they lay. Some of you are going out with guys you know where they were not Christians. You know where they have nothing to do with Christ. But you just want to marry to prove a point. And today your point is being escalated. No. Who do you want to please? And who do you want to prove that point? Some of you are still there. There are people, there are guests still in the church going out with people who don't know Christ. 
No. What were the women in Jerusalem when Ahab went to marry the king of Etbar's daughter? It doesn't work. It will never work. Solomon, with all his wisdom, he used women's ways to maintain peace. At the end, he became a fetish priest. How can... How, and the Bible says, Solomon's wife turned his heart. Turn his heart. Some of the guys in the church will never marry Christian sisters. Love the lady gaggers. Follow them. No, I'm sorry, one the ladies who walk on the nineteen cafe. I sit there and then and I excuse me. Petre, petre, petre. No far, no far. Petre, no far. That's what you like, yes? Because these people are anti so, so you won't so. Oh no. When they finish with you now, when they go there and they crash, it's the prophets and the fathers that are in trouble. And that they pray, and that they pray. My vampire, my bread. No, you are forgotten the foundation you lay. Hallelujah. I mean, that came now, do a good dashboard. So, and what are you? That came now, no good dashboard. So, hallelujah. Now, no good dashboard. So, refuse young coupon. Forgotten your foundation. Forgotten you were a star. We don't want to mention you an usher. Now, no good dashboard. So, with your micro skirt. We drag them and daddy, we are starting counseling next week. And then you are there. Oh, your boy, demeanor, what you are. And then the demon possess. There is no light in him. You could see that you don't have a future. But whatever we say, you will not listen. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof. Don't want to wait. Just want to prove a point. Those who marry in Christ, they are sound. Asasia, Untiake, Wadwa. Wadwa. Oh. After you, oh yeah, now person of the year, Fua, fertilize a woman in a Asa. I'm telling you. Some of the men in church, they marry women to just go and do manual work. Or fertilize an assign. You are just as if you high pitches. You are trying to crack your brand new child. You are just as if you don't have no part of your new miracle. You are just as if you don't have no part of your new miracle. But beer, anywhere opportunity comes in here, dog. Whether it's rainy season, near dog. Dry season, near dog. Winter, near door, even snow, yeah, the bedrock. It's there. When you tell them, they won't listen. It's all over. How do you want me to say it? They are sitting in church. They are watching me. They don't care. When they are sitting in the car, they thought they are on top of the world. Papa, papa, I have a form. Excuse me, I'm late. They the code to be. Chinchi, 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 you will come back and meet me. You will stop coming. You see that they stop coming to church suddenly. You will see them once a while. Before they appeared and they said, Daddy, I was busy. I had a job and the job is taking a lot of my time. But by the grace of God, because of your preaching about anointing of ease. I have gotten a fiancé. And Daddy, this is a blessing. This man, if you take Jesus, he's the next. Be a wanta. We can draw. We are winning. Akwaya ukro unu for me. You need Jesus assistant. Kenya wa ye wa uchira was only Jesus assistant. Kenya ya yo. No, it's a simple thing. No, very simple. Hallelujah. How would I know he's born again? You know it by their fruit. Now hear this. There are some born again guys who went out with girls in the tent. They fall into temptation sexually. But genuine. 
This is a temptation. They mend it up, they live with them, they are at peace. But who they are not there? Any temptation? Any temptation? Any protocol? Any temptation? Any temptation? Those who are tempted, when they do once, they cry. They hold your hand and say, Let's ask God's forgiveness. Then you temptation. Yesterday in the car. Let me start. Three days ago in the car. Yesterday under the tree. Today. On top of a roof. I don't know how you get there. This is what it is. And they are there. They are there. It's everything that when they come to church and that they and, and nowadays I don't know. My husband is behaving. That, what, did you talk that you marry that guy and live at peace? Or oh, you have lost your mind? Do you understand the fruit of the spirit? But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, faithfulness, kindness. Did you see those fruits in the boy? Did you see it? Listen. Take responsibility. One of the reasons why God is angry with you is that in the midst of all this, you are trying to hide it. Tell God, Lord, I've mixed it. That's the difference between David and Saul. Saul sin. Instead of trying to tell, I've seen, he said, the people, the people put pressure. David slept with Bathsheba. He said, I've seen. God said, I forgive you. Be sincere with God. Hey! You see that you can't clap? Try and clap. Listen to me. Call a spade a spade and not agricultural instrument. It has a name. Come and shake yourself before God and try to pretend as if you were trying to be a holy. What holiness? How many times did you have sex before you have wedding? And don't you know that premarital sex breaks trust? That's why you don't trust one another. Because all life are parallel. It was said that Maurice Serrero, all sins are parallel. Anybody that can commit fornication can commit adultery. The same demons will come up. It's simple. Hallelujah. You taught that the way you were. Yeah, don't call Frankies. They don't call you. Oti, 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 moving pick air or the juice. Disturbing men of God and that. Some of them even get pregnant and still come to the altar. Oh, yes. Why are you deceiving? So when we marry, we are joining three people. Hey. In the spirit realm. Lack of sincerity in the church. Daddy, or Pastor Martin, or Pastor Abed, please, I'm pregnant. These people are pastors. Me, I'm a prophet. They will manage something. You know what? Let's go to the office and do this in quick, quick, quick. I bet you now, hey, to God be the crown. Great things he has done. And now watch it. Who are you deceiving? And you may go, you may grab flowers now. To God be and one where it is the spiritual foundation that make fathers sleep with their daughters because at the vow she too was there. So he grew up seeing his mother as a competitor. Now, if you are not spiritual and you don't have insight, you don't understand. But me, I understand. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Listen. Don't deceive yourself. Don't. 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 It may look the way you look now, but you can't tell how it will look tomorrow. Get somebody and grow with him. And develop with him. 
I grew up with my wife. We married like young brother, sister, husband, wife, from nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And we grew up. Did you know the source of it? Later you came back and you realized who has manipulated you. And now you don't. It's time to pray. Violent prayer. Amen. Anytime God points to me and says, You made a mistake here, I go back to the altar. That is where God told me the way you appropriate faith, appropriate mercy. What is the number seven? The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of what? Did I give you scripture for that? Huh? Yes. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 22. I'm even been Listen to what Jeroboam said. Listen to what Jehu told Jeroboam. Second Kings 9, 22. Huh? King Jeroboam demanded, Do you come in peace? Jehu. Do you come in peace, Jehu? Jehu replied, how can there be peace as long as the adultery and witchcraft of your mother Jezebel are all around us? So the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of what? Witchcraft and prostitution. Hold on. Idolatry. Idol worship. And Jeroboam told him, Amen. Sit up. Sit up. And wake up. And stop deceiving yourself. Boy, drink water from your own system. Marry the women who are fasting and praying. Listen. There is a place in life you come to. You realize that money is nothing. Properties are nothing. All you are looking for is peace. Today, there was a time fasting and praying, Lord, give me a car. I want this car. I have come to a certain stage in my life. I have the cars, but I, I, don't, I don't go anywhere. Even I go. I don't go anywhere. No, you know, there are things you are chasing now. A time is coming. It will be there. Look at us and say, All oh, this thing we are dying for sometimes is useless, wasting our time and not serve the living God. Everything has taken over your life money, money, money. Look at it. Some guys want to marry because they want to have sex. How about phone? Oh, yeah? it's different from what it is, and you are also in Miocho. So you go there, now you are in the bedroom. Huh? Oh, far, not far, oh, far, not I mean, you, you, what? there is nothing like you are under pressure. You are dealing with issues. And they are going and coming. They will tell you, bath my back for me. Ask all the marriage men. How many of you apply pomade at their back? How many of you do do it? What about zippy? If you don't marry your friend, it will be difficult to tell, her to, to, tell him to zip. Good morning. Can you tell this person to say? Marry your friend. Marry your friend. That's not the problem. My wife and I, we can stay in a room for one week and not come out. And we will never be born. Don't be under the influence of Jezebel. Come out of it. <laughs> Marry your friend. No. You can sit down. There's a TV. We are watching movie. We are there. Hallelujah. Yeah. My wife, he likes detective films. Hmm? Watch it. Me, Kung Fu versus Yoga. Cool. Cool. That's all. I got an interest in Chinese film. I, 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 everybody. Ha! Huh? He has a long white beard. 
Huh? Young one same one can yeah. The fight has started. You cannot tell what started the fight. You don't even know who does anything wrong. Somebody met somebody and they went to young one chaka the kuhuku. Fifteen minutes. So by the time the movie ends, everybody has died. That's all. What I like about those movies is that nobody kisses anybody. Watch it. I will be on TV. Amen. Then you are there. Everybody and their interests. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you are there. Marry your friend. Mm-hmm. It's not some of you. Some ladies cannot be bold to tell their husband, open my zip. Because it's not your friend. It's your boss. It's not there. Marry your friend. After some time, then you notice that you have made a mistake. Yeah. And you need a lot of prayer to correct it. You need a lot of prayer. Because when you are prayerful, you'll be graceful. And so grace must come into the matter. And let me tell you this. The price you pay to cure is more expensive than the price you pay to prevent. It's a good one. It's a good point. Mm-hmm. And if you, just in case you pretend you have forgotten, I will repeat it again. The price you pay to cure is more expensive than the price you pay to prevent. To prevent it, amen. You keep it somewhere. Make sure that you are all night. If you marry, stay with your wife. Bring soundness. Don't be distracted. No. If it's beautiful men you are looking for, you cannot be exhaust them. You meet Jay, you meet Matty, you meet Fati, you meet Fatima, you meet Abolo, you meet this, and they are there. And they are saying that the beautiful ones are not yet born. So if you don't seek your mental strength and which is rooted in purity, you have trouble. Soundness. I can tell you where the men who are walking in purity and not under the influence of Jezebel and living with their wife, they are sound. Number two, it makes worship exciting. Because you don't come under guilt and guilt is one of the trusted weapons of the devil. So, you just go to the presence of God who are there. You can pretend, but you cannot live in sin and enjoy God's presence. Yeah. No. Listen, when Adam sinned, he ran. Yeah. And he said, I'm naked. So, sin makes you still walk naked even though you are dressed. In the spirit of it. It's, it's not worth it. Hallelujah. You may be like you have a feeling. You must meet the feeling. And, 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 and Babylon can present it as if it's edible when it make it very appetizing. Until you taste it and realize that it's too much pepper. Uh, 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 I got a German and Hannah about Akaza. When she cool, she was with the Yasima Kuni owners. Yeah. When we used to go to see, they can do shit off for you. Nobody will beg you for shit. One of my friends asked me, Don't you have tomatoes in your, in your, in your hometown? It's a very serious matter. Soundness. The young girls that have their small one bedroom apartment or self contained and living pure. Eh? Small co pot or stove, small this, small that, with their Bible and living pure. They have soundness. Sound. When you meet them in church, you can tell. Those who the guy has a key to your bedroom, but you don't have a key to his house because his wife is there. So I come and say, "Oh, two punuma, two key." No, say na be ya me ba me ti me bi. Into what da ba onen go abonte? Say ni friend, the guy has a key to your house. Into when you lock the door, then you remove the key so that he can put it outside and open and enter. 
and your bounce so and I don't want to go. She will go back. Kai, 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 kai. Just remember. Yeah. I'm trying to finish. She loves his wife. I got up and I mean, hmm? you are disturbing yourself for nothing. What are you looking for in the world? For what? Money, wealth, cars, mobile phone. You want what? Nokia 10? iPhone 12. It's 33 one, I bet you 12. So if you keep following it, you bet you 100, and then you are still living in sin. No. Godliness with contentment is great. We brought nothing to this world, and certainly we will take nothing. And you don't want to hear the truth. What does what to tell you? You are going to get Jehu's anointing and go and misbehave. Did Jehu misbehave? God was so strong. He established a principle that lasted for almost 40 generations. I'll show you. Jehu. Jesus Christ. He killed every evil person in Jerusalem. So, Jehu was angry for anything that looked like Jezebel. So when you receive Jehu's anointing, you entertain some things. And let me tell you something. Don't follow your beauty. Gravity is on you. I told one of my daughters, I said, hey girl, you are misbehaving. And I begin to put them. You know, wisdom is too high for the fool. I say, you are in what is called the flower of your age. But the grass withered and the flower fade. But the word of God will abide. I see season a woman and my and my educa a bow breaking you know, a bit trouble. So God give you that season so that you settle. Settle down. It's not for you to mess up mm. under the influence of Jezebel. Yes, the father men are stopping that so we should open up to anybody. Your weapon is not in, in between your legs, it's in your brain. You sit, apply it. The spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of false teaching, false prophecy, idol worship, immorality. Jezebel is seducing, sexual, immoral, idol worshiping. He is a self proclaimed prophet. I showed you yesterday in the book of Revelation. Do you remember that scripture? Revelation chapter 2 from verse number 18 all the way to 20. Now I show you. Jesse Bay, the prophetess who teach my servants to commit fornication. So he's a self-proclaimed prophet. That is the spirit. Let's end. Amen. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2 verse 20 downward when we read it. The spirit of Jezebel is the spirit of selfishness, self-love, pride, arrogance, and seduction. So they will seduce you. If you come to China, they get there, when the name star, when the name star, star be. Hey, how are you? Mm -hmm. Need a strong discernment. There is a way a woman can talk to you, you'll be trapped. Because you are not dealing with a human being, you are dealing with a spirit. Pass here and pick me for all night. When you get there, you ask one thing, you say, sit down, let me shower quickly and come. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> or you are not a human being? When you come to the battles around women, if animals are not spared, Today we're going around to my mother. I say, see this donkey. There were two animals. They fought her. I danced the other one. And they are fighting because some of the movements has come on heat. One day they almost kill one another. They were killing themselves when the women were watching them and eating. I told my mother, I said, this thing about women, 
There are some big, big fowls I have. They are called Brahmas. They are from America. They are huge. They are like cockroaches. They walk around. Unfortunately, when I got them, there were more f- males than females. The day they arrived, one male came, one, one male. Because there were only two females among the five males, they started killing one another. Don't follow a woman and be killed. Also, there are a lot of young men. Eh? What is killing the anointing is women. If they are not able to rise up, it's because they cannot zip up. Okay? I have never, I have never experienced it, but I've read it. I have read and I heard a man of God be talking about a man of God he invited to come and preach. And when the guy left, they invited, when the guy left and they were going to pay the hotel bill, they pay a lot of bill for whiskey. Or book by Nami Yusuno. One great man of God. I'm not giving lances to go and drink because you won't survive. Them, go and read God's There are some of them they drink. But some of them, eh, they have all kinds of weaknesses. But those who are womanizers, they never survive. Never. If Solomon with all the wisdom couldn't survive, you, you don't even have Solomon's wisdom song. Couldn't survive. Solomon became a fetish priest. And he wrote inside, all is vanity. Some pastors ignorantly have preached vanity. One day God opened my eyes and said, never preach that thing. I said, why? He said, what Solomon called vanity, I gave it to him. He never asked for riches. He asked for wisdom. God said, I will add riches. How can God give you something that become vanity? The thing was not vanity, but the woman made it vanity. God gave the wealth to Solomon. He blessed him and gave him the riches. He asked for wisdom. God said, I will add riches. So the wealth of Solomon was given by God. God cannot give you something to become vanity. It depends on what you attach it to. They are coming. Pick one of these girls. Marry her. And be determined to stay with her till Jesus comes. You'll be fine. No matter the battles you go through, if the devil does not have accusation of your spermantosia in another woman's wardrobe, you will survive. This is it. Eh? But I know another pastor. What did it and survive? Are you that pastor? Are you? Are you? Read the Bible. There are things others survived, others died. Read it. There is a message I have to preach you the dealings of God. In his own prerogative, he decides who, who can cancel the law. Who will he consult? He asked Job, when I was creating the word, where were you? Were you there when I was laying the foundation? That means that nobody challenged my authority. He doesn't consult anybody to bless another person. No, not withstand your enemies. That is why in church, eh? Be you being careful the way you judge people? This guy, I know that he doesn't have character, but look at the way God is blessing him. You that has character, look at the way you are begging. Careful. If you keep your mouth shut, you'll be, your life will advance. Amen. The dealings of God. Mm-hmm. You know everything about the guest story. I know that he used to go out with this guy. I know that he also went out with this man's husband, this woman's uh, husband. And I know that he was also going out with his boss. But look at the blessing. Look at the favor. You have been gossiping about her for eight years. All the eight years, you keep advancing and you keep retrogressing. So who really is on the Lord's side? Finally, spirit of Jezebel. Have I given you? Huh? It's the spirit of what? Selfishness, self-love, pride and arrogance. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 7 to 9. Give me the New Living Translation. Watch this scripture very carefully. It will bless you. 
Isaiah chapter 47, from verse 7 to now, New Levitra, you said, I will reign forever as a queen of the world. That is the way Jezebel talks. You did not reflect on your actions or think about their consequences. So when you start talking about yourself, remember the Lord your God. This is what he was talking. You said, I will reign forever as a queen. And if Jezebel has a way, he didn't even want to die. Go to the next verse. <laughs> Listen to this. You, bless, you pleasure loving kingdom. Living at ease and feeling secure. You say, I am the only one and there is no other. I will never be a widow or lose my children. This is the spirit of Jezebel. She will never be a widow or lose his children. He lost Ahab and he lost all 70 of his. Everybody in his house died. Listen to the word of the Lord. Learn something. Well, both these things will come upon you in a moment. Widowhood and the loss of your children. Yes, these calamities will come upon you despite all your witchcraft and magic. This is the bottom line. Now hear this. There is a realm that your confidence is to rest on your magic and witchcraft until God show you the red car. So all the things he said is because I will never be a widow. I will never be this. I will never be this because it was hanging not on the mercy of God but witchcraft and magic. Witchcraft and what? Magic. Witchcraft and magic. One woman in the Bible has gone out with five of people's husbands. And because of the way he has a seductive spirit, only Jesus himself can convert her. So an evangelist cannot stand. It has to be Jesus himself. Jesus himself has to go and sit at the well and win one woman. Amen. Are you hearing it? Yes. Tell somebody, don't boast about yourself. Don't. And don't boast too much about your achievement. Tell the person, don't boast too much about your achievement. And be careful the way you turn yourself in the mirror. You can see. Some of the girls, when you see them walking, you could feel the pride. The pride of I'm a beautiful girl. Who told you? If you look at those guys who say you are beautiful, look at your mm -hmm. The guys who say you are beautiful, look at their characteristics. That CV you are carrying, be careful. That is also from telling you, some, some guys say, eh? If they humble themselves, they marry long time. Long time. They can scam potters. No man is qualified. <laughs> These guys. That's why I, mean. I don't want them to be my friend because me. Excuse me. Let me throw to do an archery. Look. So it's there. They'll start doing that 25 years. Mm. Then they go to 30. Mm. By the time you go to 34. Mm. All those who are trusting God for Mary, please come. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't humble yourself, God will humble you. Where you come to the place and say, Man, a man, I can't, Papa, I don't care. Because you notice that life is more than the way you are talking. Stand to your feet. No, I've seen them. No, I've seen them. I've watched it. Huh. Humble yourself. Married boys who cannot afford Rodoran today, they are God's champions tomorrow. When you are through too much. The spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of witchcraft, idolatry, doctrines and demons. Doctrines of demons. 
Did I tell you about the way Jeroboam, uh, Jehu killed all the prophets? Second Kings chapter 10, verse 19. Second Kings 10, 19. Give me the King James Version. Second Kings chapter 10 and verse number 19. Therefore, Sam, now, now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal. Uh-huh. All his servants, all his priests, let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Who is talking like this? Jehu. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtlety. Come to New Living Translation. This is what I wanted to show you. I promise I will show you. So let me show you. Therefore, Simon all the prophets and worshippers of what? Now, do you know that Elijah killed all the prophets of Baal? So where are from this one? Jezebel raised another squad. So if you don't lift up Jehu's anointing, huh? if you what they kill, they will raise another one. Elijah slaughtered all of them at the Blue Kidro. But where from this one? Now watch this. And call together all. And the way he killed them, and he called them in the party and told them that he wants to sacrifice. So they were coming, John, John, John. Oh, we have convicted Jehu. They didn't know it was their death sentence. This anointing to make you wiser. Yeah. Therefore, summon all the prophets and the worshippers of Baal and call together all his priests. See to it that every one of them comes. For I am going to offer a great sacrifice to Baal. Hey, Jehu now didn't want to Anyone who fails to come will be put to death. But Jehu is cunning. Plan. Jehu's cunning plan was to destroy all the worshippers of Baal. He said, no nonsense anoint you. No, it's not for romance. What do I call it? He said, no nonsense what? Did you hear what I said? He said, no nonsense what? It's the same thing Elijah did. It's 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 17. Same thing. Now summon all Israel to join me at Mount Carmel, along with the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Absalom who are supporting. So how many prophets? 850. This is why the church sometimes is lacking a lot of things. One woman, the Bible said they eat at Jezebel's table. One woman was feeding a comfort 850. This is the bottom line. Look at it. Obadiah put 100 prophets in 50 caves and took care of them. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is it. It's another message. We'll preach it next time. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, when you give a prophet, he said, when you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. It's the bottom line. The prophetic anointing. It's something else. It's unique. You need it. You need it. It carries boldness and courage. It brings direction and clarity. It leads people. It stirs revival. And above all, above all, it provokes and releases prosperity. Yeah. Praise God forevermore. Lift up your Jehu oil and hold it. God bless you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the message. For further inquiries, contact Well Prayer Center PO Box GP21421 Accra or telephone plus 233-274-009933 or plus 233-242-472655. Email us on info at portercity.com or visit our website www.portercity.com. Location plot 16 Mutual Road, Prom Prom, Greater Accra, Ghana.